Joe in real life. It's, well here, I'll show you. It's kind of the middle of the night here in Savannah, Georgia. Um, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. And I'm going to say something not controversial, and then I'm going to say something controversial about sleep, right? First, sleep's super important. <laughs> it is super crazy important. And you should get all the good, high-quality sleep you can get. Um, it, it would be really difficult to get too much sleep. You know, if you're tired and you're sleepy... Get some sleep, man. That's just recovery points in the bank. That's, it couldn't be better. <laughs> it could, you know, unless you have a sleep disorder, it, it can't get better. Um, so that's the non-controversial part. Here's the controversial part. If you can't sleep, if you can't sleep, just don't. Don't do it, you know? Like, I think... Um, Laying down and resting when you're not tired and your body won't turn off is a waste of fucking time and it's ridiculous and you're just torturing yourself, you know? I'm turning 46 in a couple weeks. This took me years to learn. If you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't go back to sleep, just get fucking up. Just get up. Just find something to do. You know what happens when you do that? Not every time. Every once in a while, though, I don't know, let's say half the time. Half the time. If you get up and start doing something, like I like to do the dishes, 20 minutes later you'll get sleepy and you can go back to bed. Um, if you lay in bed and hem and haw and roll around and fret about how you're not going to get enough sleep, 0% chance, 0 that you're going to fall back asleep. You just won't do it. You won't be able to do it. Because you're stressing yourself up. You get up. You do a little stupid chore. Pick something unambitious. Don't drink a cup of coffee. Pick an unambitious chore. Or read a book. Or watch a stupid thing on YouTube. I did that. This, that's how I tested it this morning. Middle of the night morning. Um... And then if you don't get sleepy, just get up, man. Just get up and get about you get an early start on your life. You know? Nobody promised you perfect sleep every night. That, that wasn't in the contract. Um, so I'm real I'm like, you know, I'm real tired looking right now, but I feel fine. I'm gonna do my run and my burpees and my squats. And those are my thoughts on sleep. <laughs> Super important. Unless you can't do it, then don't do it. <laughs> I'm a little punchy. I can see that now. Uh, stay tuned, guys. We're gonna, we're gonna, I want a front squat today. Let's do front squats. Okay, I'll see you soon. So today you're gonna get a weird and a little bit of an embarrassing version of me. I thought about just filming my top set and leaving it with my sleep rant and then just like, you know, my daily minimum and that's it. But instead, because I'm feeling punchy and kind of tired, I figured I'd show you what just a goof off day is like. So here I'm doing some like I'm trying to stand on my toes and I'm holding a 15 pound kettlebell and I'm just playing with foot strength and my arch, you know? Mm. I'm also enjoying a coffee. That's that slurping noise. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I like I knew I wasn't going to get a hard one in today. And I also like it's supposed to be a rest day. I did 2 days of candido. And so like going hard today was not on the books. I'm exhausted. I didn't sleep. So this is just like exploring, you know? I did my run this morning and I couldn't help but feel an itchy little twinge in the arch of my right foot. And I could have just worked up to my daily minimum and got out of here in like five, 10 minutes.
but I didn't want to. I wanted to listen to music. I wanted to hang out in my garage. So I figured, let's, let's play with the foot. Let's see what happens. And what I'm doing is I'm basically looking for positions under load where I get that same sensation that I got while I was running. You know, it's not pain exactly. And, and those of you with nagging minor injuries know the feeling that I'm talking about. It's just, it's, a, it's an itch. It's like a weird, itchy feeling under the skin that doesn't have a specific location. I mean, it's in my right heel, but the closer I come to like pinpointing where it is, it moves, you know? And you'll see later, I get like a little um, body work mobility ball out and I roll my heel around on that and look for it. Um, and I'm just working up, I'm just working up to a weight and just playing with my feet, just playing with my foot strength, just trying to, I'm not even doing any rehab prehab, you know, I'm, I'm just exploring, that's it. Um, many of you know, but in case you're new to the channel, I'm an ex-yoga teacher. I guess technically I'm still a yoga teacher. And one of the feelings I have about yoga, you, you know, the old, the old colloquialism, like it's not rocket science. Um, like that's yoga too. Everything's not rocket science, not even rocket science, but yoga, especially metaphorically and literally isn't rocket science um, a lot of yoga studios and yoga teachers will try to sell you yoga as like a cure-all like well uh, what's yoga good for it's good for absolutely everything it'll cure any any ailment you have serious or minor um, that's not true i mean I, I know i don't have to tell you that but that's just straight up not true uh, nothing will do that you know, there's nothing on earth that'll do that. Um, what yoga will do, okay, I'm about to tell the truth. Yoga does more to change your attitude about your body, your physical ailments, your performance, than it does to change your body itself. Um, that's blasphemy in some circles. You know, my old Ashtanga circles saying something like that would get me knifed and i you're probably thinking oh yeah it makes you you know more serenity it makes you more chill like or more at peace and that's that's what he's saying you know you you'll you'll care less um it's actually the opposite you care more but you care in a very sterile way in a very specific and sanitized way you become more of a scientist and less of like a child. Like you're, you're, people always say like, you know, have beginner's mind, have child's mind. I, that's not what the practice does. It, it does the opposite of that. Like when you're learning something new, it's helpful to be playful. And it's certainly not joyless yoga, but but when you get into it, even just a little bit, it, it's about like a divorce from those emotions, those feelings, those prejudices and judgments. And not just the big obvious judgments, you know? Um, yoga often gets, gets roped in with the body positivity movement, you know? Yoga is about loving your body and all shapes, all sizes, da 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 da. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's about not having any feelings at all about it. You know? Like a complete amputation of those feelings. Being non judgmental doesn't mean combating negative feelings with false affirmations. It means a complete divorce. Look at it as it is on the ground. And like, you're watching me do this right now. I'm sure it's a very boring video. Basically, I'm working up to an unimpressive front squat and I'm doing some weird 
like standing on my toes things badly, I might add, you know, and working my heel out with a little ball on the ground. Like, yeah, it's not very interesting. And it's not very yoga-like. I don't do a single yoga posture. But what I am doing is I'm exploring. I'm looking for information and I'm remaining unpartial about this information. Like information for information's sake alone. I, I had the uh, hip circle out, which I, I enjoy hip circles. I do quite a bit of them, but I did one set of hip circles and immediately discarded it because I was barking up the wrong tree today. That wasn't the issue. That's not the problem, you know? So what do you do? You go back to the woodshed. You don't, just because I own a bunch of these things and I've, I've enjoyed their efficacy before, doesn't mean that today, right now, this specific concern, it's the right tool. And it's so important to develop a sort of pitiless indifference to these things, you know? Um, and this, this goofy move that I invented today, where I basically just, I have a, a close stance, I hold a 15 pound kettlebell, I get on my toes, I push my knees forward, I hinge at the hip just a little bit or a lot of bit, depending, and I find that arch. I find that weird little itchy, burny feeling and you just play with it, you know? And the front squats didn't feel good or bad. They felt, they felt normal. I'm pretty sore from Candido. It's week one, so I'm supposed to be sore right now. Um, they were unspectacular. They, uh, you know, I got maybe three hours of sleep. Um, so given making an adjustment for the limited amount of sleep I got, my front squats went exactly as I'd expect. And even my foot issue, like I was on my feet all day yesterday and my foot hurt a little bit while I was running today. That, this is not surprising, <laughs> you know? That, that's just life, man. Like to think that we're gonna go through life pain-free and use our bodies however we want is just an absolutely silly worldview. And more power to you if you can maintain it, but I promise you, unless you're an insane genetic outlier, you're not gonna achieve that goal. It's not gonna happen, you know? And instead, can you can you listen to your body in that, like, not with compassion, with like, with a serious mind? Can you study what it's telling you? And can you come to compromises, come to workarounds, come to a way to, to work within your limitations without feeling limited, without feeling down on yourself or upset? Um, that's yoga. To me, that's yoga, at least. You know, I got no business telling you what yoga is. Anyway, I'm super sleepy and I rambled. Um, this is Joe in real life. I love you guys. Be good to each other today. I'm going to do my best to do the same. Uh, oh, yeah, this last one. This last one was great. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll get some rest.